I was ready to go over his house one night. So I call him. He sounded just like out of it that whole day. I remember thinking to myself, like, we might get into a fist fight with this guy. Like, you know, we might get into a fight uh, at some point. And um, I'm on my way over there. And uh, that night, I remember he just sounded off. He really sounded like just so fucked up. Uh, when I was pulling down the road, I called him and I said, hey, Royce, I'm, uh, I'm down the block. Just give him a heads up, you know, like open the door or whatever. And uh, and he said to me, he said, don't go to the front door. He said, meet me around uh, in the back by the dock. So I'm walking around. But this whole time during the day, he knew you were coming that night. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. He, he, okay. So he kind of had a plan. Yeah. I mean, in retrospect, yes. Okay. At the time, I just, I figured we were going to talk it out and figure something out and I mean, whatever. But, um, so I'm driving over there. I call him, Royce, I'm down the block. Meet me around the house. Go in the back by the dock, he says. Right. I say, okay. I hang up. I start thinking to myself, like, that was odd. He said it like, he just, again, he sounded weird. He sounded, he almost sounded like he was crying or something. Right? Like, just distraught. So, as I'm pulling up, um, I called my girlfriend at the time and I said, do you think that this guy would really do some crazy shit? Like, do you think he would try to actually kill me? I mean, what do you think? And she instantly, she's like, yeah, what are you, stupid? Did you tell her he said, come around the back? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I explained it. And she said, that's shady. She's like, what do you, she's like, turn around right now or go meet him somewhere at a public place at least. Right. So I said, yeah, you're right. I hang up the phone. And I call him back, and now I'm driving like real slow on the street, <laughs> trying to manage the situation. I say, hey, Royce, meet me at the L house down the block. I'm going to go grab a beer. So he says, I have beer. He's like, I have beer here. He's like, just just come here. He's like, uh, <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'm in my pajamas. Right. I'm like, okay. I said, hey, uh, is Ter what's up with Terry? I said, I she wanted to see these, these pictures from the 4th of July party. I'm like, uh, what's, what's she up to? He's like, Terry's sleeping. He said, just just come in the back. All right. So by now, uh, I Terry's was like- Terry's girlfriend. Yeah, Terry's his girlfriend. Well, actually, fiance. So now I'm like, that's cool, bro. I'm like, you know what? Just meet me at the L house. All right. <laughs> and he said, uh, he's like, bro, he's like, just come in the back. Come. He's like, come in the back, bro. I'm back here now. I'm in my pajamas. He said, I would never hurt you. He's like, Terry loves you. You're like family to us. <laughs> Who said anything about get hurting? Exactly. What? So it struck me as odd. And I said, listen, Royce, I'm going to go to the L house. Come meet me at the L house. I'll buy you a drink, right? Put some clothes on. Better yet, come in your pajamas, whatever. All right. So he responded and said something like, something along the lines of, come in the back by the dock. He starts... He starts like blowing up, right? Just like a madman scream. Right. That you just, to like you know, like what the fuck is going on here? This guy's losing his shit. Right. So uh, I was, at this point, I'm pulling in the driveway, right? And I had, my exhaust was loud on my car. And uh, I'm pulling in the driveway. I hang up the phone and I throw it in reverse. And I'm pulling out, I pull away, and I see him run out in the street, right, with uh, with his boxers on. All right. And he's like flailing. I'm like, what the fuck? Is, this guy's gone. So it's, the whole thing was creepy, right? <clears throat> the next day I get a phone call. And the way it all happened was so fucked up too. I mean, I get a phone call the next day from a mutual friend of ours, <clears throat> uh, this individual by the name of Angel. And Angel calls me and says, Joe, he's like, did you hear what happened last night? I said, no, what? He's like, Royce, he killed your sister. I'm like, my sister? What? I'm like, what are you talking about? So I, I hang up on him. I, I take my phone. I call my sister who lives in Boca. Right. Uh, and she answers the phone. I'm like, Jess? She's like, yeah. I'm like, are you okay? She's like, yeah, I'm fine. Why? I'm here with mom. And I'm like, 
I was, I mean, I was, I was bugging out. I hang up on her. I call back Angel. I'm like, what kind of sick joke are you playing? Right. He's like, no, no, I'm sorry. No, not your, your real sister. He killed Terry. Okay, now Terry's his fiance, <clears throat> and she used to always call herself my sister, right? Because right. me and Royce, you know, at one point, you know, we had a real close friendship. We were like brothers, right? Right. And uh, before everything started, you know, getting going south. So uh, I was just, I mean, I was in disbelief, right? And I mean, immediately I was thinking, he, so he explains everything to me. He's like, he killed her. He There's yellow tape in front of the whole house right now. You can't even get over there. I'm like, how did you find out? He said, um, I, I was blowing him up. I was calling him, calling him, calling him. He didn't answer the phone. So then he called another mutual friend of ours. And this guy happened to be on the phone with her, right? When she was shot. Oh, okay. Okay. And uh, he told him everything. He told him like how it went down. And it was, it was such a sad day because, I mean, she was an amazing human being. I mean, the woman... She, you know, she had some hardship early in life and she came up and built a business, a single mother, uh, I think 11 and nine were the age of her kids from a previous marriage and uh, she had an incredible business, beautiful house. She was living, you know, the American dream and, um, and now she's dead, right? So, yeah, it just creeped me out, the whole thing. So the, you know, the police report, right? And the, the news, uh, that night, like after you left, mm. they got into an argument and he shot her a couple of times, right? It was a once or twice uh, with an AK-47. Yeah. So the neighbors call. No, no, no. The neighbors didn't call. No, uh, I think he called. Yeah. I don't think anybody anybody <clears throat> called. So Did you hear the recording online? No, I haven't heard that. Recording. I don't know if it's still there, but I heard it once. So, oh, I, I heard it was part of the uh, part of the news, right? Was it a news clip? I don't know. I don't so, even know how somebody found it. I listen. So said he called whether or not she was already dead before he you said, came oh, right, or right. after. I don't know exactly what the time. I think it might might have been shortly after you didn't show up. So I think it was before. Maybe you think maybe I don't know. He sounded so desperate. I mean, I've always thought <clears throat> since that happened, I've had the thought that maybe he was trying to get me there so desperately. To say that I killed her, right, right. To come around the back, and the gun. right, why, right. right. Terry's exactly. sleeping. Yeah, she's yeah. <laughs> so you come around the back. There was an argument. You were breaking in. You were going to kill him. Whatever. Right. She got shot in the scuffle. <clears throat> Who knows? But yeah. the point is, is that he calls this nine one one call and says that that she ended up. Um, she pulled a gun on him. They fought over the gun. It went off. Then when they get him downtown. And they see by this point they've got him downtown. They can see the blood splatter. They yeah. can see the the um the powder, the, the, the gunpowder gun residue, residue. Everything. They realize <clears throat> she was about six feet away. So he sh he was holding the gun. He shoots her. So then he changes his story again. You know, uh, the gun went off. She was coming at me. She, she had a knife. You know, it changes like three or four different times until yeah. he eventually breaks down and says, "Right." Then what happened was <clears throat> that he shot her. Yeah. He said that there was, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. He said that there was. He was cleaning the gun. Didn't know that there was one in the chamber. <clears throat> then when they found the gun, there was one in the chamber. Right. But so he said that <clears throat> it reloaded. He, which yeah. means the clip wasn't it. Right. He said it. He was cleaning it, and the, there was one in the chamber. Didn't know it. The clip wasn't in it. Well, if it right. went off, then it the, it wouldn't reload. The the it chamber. wouldn't reload. There was, exactly. It had to be. So that's when they so, caught him in the lab. Right. It was just multiple lies, and, and eventually yeah. he breaks down and says that he, you know, there was whatever. Right. It went off. Yeah. You know, she got it. He got it away from her. He was holding it. It went off. You, you know, know I never talked. I've seen the individual that was on the phone with her right. when she died, but I never brought it up just out of like respect. I didn't, I'm sure, I heard he went through some things like after that because he was close with her. Right. Um, but I've always been curious. You know, I never asked him, but, you know, he knows, he's probably the only person that knows what happened. So, other than Royce. So, <laughs> Royce gets grabbed. He's not getting out. Like you're not getting bond, right, right, right. you're in jail for first degree murder. So what what happened as far as you know at that point? Yeah, so I was I was not supposed to be in, in that industry that I was operating in. Right. And uh, you know, the securities industry, right? Anything to do with stocks and uh, you know, um, uh, all that stuff. Anyway, 
at that point, I had a feeling that he was going to start making it known uh, for what reason. I don't know, to get like a better mattress maybe. <laughs> uh, but well, He's trying to get out of a life sentence. I'm sh sure he's trying anything at this point. Like once is. they've got you, now he's he's scrambling. Yeah, I mean, but to think that that would get you out of life. I mean, know. you know. <laughs> Anyway, I mean, <clears throat> he did what he did. And uh, so, I, I mean, I kind of knew that that something was coming down the pipe. I didn't think it would be, I thought it would be like regulatory. All right. I so he tells the authorities, <clears throat> he tells the authorities that yeah. you guys are raising money, you're involved, you're not licensed, they're right. doing raises, they're bringing in money. But he lies. Doesn't he end up saying like, "Oh, it's a Ponzi scheme"? Yeah. Like he's it's it's bullshit. Like he yeah. starts saying they're, they're not. They yeah. don't even have a license. Right? They right. don't like all the things that he's kind of been saying. It, but but it aren't true. No. He just starts playing all that up and starts yeah, just just to try and right, get. Yeah, you should put the link up to the gaming commission. It's still active. Right. Actually, it's actually still active right now. I check from time to time. Just I don't know, right. I have it, I guess. But um. But yeah, all that was, uh, he, he made it out like everything was, you know, not true. Like everything was a scam. And I guess they fed into it. I mean, he was a great salesman when he sobered up and he had no choice. He was sober in there and he was probably selling the shit out of him. Right. So, uh, I mean, I knew that I probably would lose the ability to be involved, but I never expected what happened. Right. You know, I never in a million years expected to see that happen.